Good morning. Yesterday I was talking about the importance of setting a joy before us based on the passage of scripture in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 to 3. And today I try to build upon that by focusing in on how we can set a joy before us so that we live from a place of possessing and overflowing with joy. And so I want to focus in on two particular ways that we can set a joy before us. Things to focus in on. Firstly, from John chapter 14, a well-known passage, but I want to read it from the Passion Translation. And it says this, Don't worry or surrender to your fear. For you believed in God, now trust and believe in me also. My Father's house has many dwelling places. If it were otherwise, I will tell you plainly, because I go to prepare a place for you to rest. And when everything is ready, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. And kind of the language and the context of this is this idea of a bridegroom coming back to get his bride and take her to this special place that he has prepared for her. And obviously I love this verse, but I love the context and the wording that's used in the Passion Translation. It says, don't worry or surrender to your fear. See, fear often feels like this kind of battering ram against our lives, hitting the gatehouse of our, of our lives, seeking to get an entrance, seeking to knock us down. It's certainly not a place of rest. We hear things on our news feeds, we get emails of news that keeps changing, and our emotions keep changing, and it keeps pounding against us. And here it says, don't worry or surrender because of this kind of joy that we can set before us. That Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. This house is solid. This house is certain. This house and place for us is set literally in rock and stone for us. Let us focus in on that. Another way of a joy that we can set before us is by reading the last chapter. What do you mean by that? By looking at Revelation, where we see past all the chaos that happens in the world. And God says, I'm going to bring a new earth and a new heaven. Knowing the end helps you live in the present. I'm a Liverpool fan. My apologies to those of you who aren't. And you know, one of my desires for my family, for my children is that they would grow up loving and pursuing God and that they would be fans of Liverpool. At the moment, three out of four are kind of that way, particularly two of them. And they're kind of coming to the age now where I feel that they can go through an initiation, kind of a ceremony, a rite, and allow them to watch what's called the Miracle Istanbul. If you're not a football fan, you can type that into YouTube, Miracle Istanbul, and you come up with a match between Liverpool and AC Milan in 2005. And Liverpool are losing 3 nil at half time, and they come through and they win. Everybody thought there's no way Liverpool could do it, and they did it. Now the reason I love watching this with my children is, is I can sit there quite smug and laid back and see them score the first goal and the second goal and the third goal. Why? Because I know the final score. And because of that, I can live from a place of joy and a hope, even though Liverpool are losing. Because I know the final score. And Revelation tells us the final score. Revelation shows us Christ's victory in all its fullness. Christ's restora um, restoration and salvation in all its fullness. So as we live in a season where maybe it feels like you, you keep letting a goal in after a goal, and it looks slightly hopeless and despair, maybe you've written yourself off, maybe other people have written you off. But we know the final score, and we know what God can do in us and through us, and what His purposes and destinies are for us. So let's set these things before us, these joys before us, because they will help us endure in this season, in this time, for whatever season we face in the future. So I'm going to pray, God help me to set these things before me.
The things happening right now, Lord, are temporary, even though they might seem to be going on and on. But the things of heaven and your work that you're always working at and seeking to outwork, to see your kingdom come on earth, will happen. And let these be the joys I set before me. Amen.